Okay, now we'll be talking about a very important part uh, about how to examine the lung, how to examine the ventilation. So when you have a patient and you want to examine his lung, one of the methods to examine his lung is to examine his ventilation by doing something called spirometry. Of course, there are other that you can do, like chest X-ray. You know, everyone, every single method has its own, you know, uh, indications. Okay, but now let's see how to examine the ventilation. So uh, to examine the lung and its airways. This is the ventilation. Okay, spirometry. It's done with the help of a device, this device. Uh, okay, now the technology is more advanced. So I'm, I have a device in the hospital that it's like a pistol, small thing, that it has a tube and something to connect on a computer. So the patient had to breathe through this tube and the computer and this pistol registers and everything I see on a laptop. So it's mobile. I can move from room to room, from patient to patient and do the, execute the, the spirometry. So it's easier now, you understand? Okay, how to do this spirometry? Well, the patient will be like, will, will, put this tube in his mouth and he starts breathing through this tube from, from his mouth only because I will put something on his nose, okay? So he will be like this. How much air he has in his lung before starting the process? This is how much air. He will have what? The FRC, right? It means what? The expiratory reserve volume and the residual volume. Now, I tell the patient, please start breathing in and out. Normal breathing. What he will do? Inspiration, breathe in, a little air, then expiration, breathe out, a little air, inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expiration. Then I tell the patient, breathe in with all your force. Then I tell him, cut everything out with all you got. And I tell him, don't stop, don't stop. Get out, get everything out, everything out, everything out. I force him to get everything out for like six seconds of expiration, you understand? So what the device will calculate? It will calculate the total lung capacity all the lung? No. What it will calculate? Is this without what? Residual volume. residual volume. Because you cannot breathe out the residual volume. So what if the device will, will, uh, will calculate? Something called what? Vital capacity. So what is the vital capacity? Is the total air that goes out, you understand? After a maximum inspiration, you understand? But it's not only the vital capacity because I'm forcing him to do it very efficiently and fast. So I calculate something called forced vital capacity. You understand? Let's give an example of a value. How much value it can have this vital capacity? Force vital capacity in letters. Around 5,000 milliliters. So around five letters. This is the FVC, force vital capacity. Let's say five letters, okay? Now, the device is smart. You understand what I mean? When the patient 
start exhaling all the vital capacity. Look at me. Now I want to start exhaling, okay? How many seconds I exhale? Six. Six. Okay. The device will calculate the air that went out in the first second. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, how much air do you think will go out in the first second? Look at me. How much air do you think goes out in the first second? A lot or a little? A lot. A lot. Most of the air will go out in the first second. So the device will calculate something called FEV1. What is FEV1? First expiratory volume in the first second. And for example, four letters. So this one, when he get all the air out, he got five letters. But in the first second, he got how much? Four letters. You understand? So in the rest of the five seconds, I forced him to get one letter. Okay. The device will also calculate something else. It's called the Tifno index. The Tifno index is what? FEV1 on FPC percentage. So what is the Tifno index in this situation? Anyone can calculate it? FEV1 on FVC, so four on five percentage. So how much will it will give us? In this situation, it's exactly 80%. You understand? So I am taking out 80% of the air in the first Second, is it clear? These are the three things, the most important three things that the spherometry calculates. Is it only these three things? No, there are other things too. Let's see what. Okay, while the patient uh, brace, a loop will be formed. You understand what I mean? Here we have the volume. Here we have the flow. Flow is equivalent with speed. Okay? Speed. Later on, second. Okay, what is the maximum volume that it can, the patient can brace it? What we call it, all the volume. Fast. Sorry, what was the question? What is the total volume that the person can brace it? The device calculated it. The vital capacity? Yes, the fourth vital capacity. So let's say from here to here is what? The fourth vital capacity. Vital Do you capacity. understand? Okay. Why I did two parts of the loop? Because up, stay up in the up part, we will talk about expiration. And in the inside part, we will talk about what? Inspiration. Okay, now we have to draw the speeds, the flow. Let's, let's think. If I will do inspiration, you understand what I'm trying to do? I'm doing inspiration. During inspiration, how do you think the airways will be? Open or closed? Open. Open. My question, my second question, how the airways are 
doing during inspiration? They will get larger or get narrower? Larger. Why? Because we decrease the PIP, we increase the transmural pressure, so they will get larger, okay? So in all the inspiration, we don't have narrowing of the airways, right? So the speeds of inspiration, if you look at them, Oops. No, I'm not doing it right. But something like this, I don't care. If you look at the, I don't know, in the middle of inspiration or in the you know, many parts of the inspiration, you will see that the speed, the flow is almost the same, right? Why? Because all the airways are open and it depends on the ports that I breathe in and out. You understand? Now, when I try to do expiration, so I will draw an up, the upside part. You understand what I mean? At the beginning of expiration, how is all the airways? Open. Open. Why? Because the lung is full. All the ways are open. Now I will start doing what? Expiration. What we do? We increase the PIP. So we press on the alveoli and on the airways, right? The air will start to go out, but the first air that go out will be with the high speed or low speed. Nice. So this will have something like this, a peak. We have a speed, peak speed. You understand? We have a peak speed. And during we do, while we do expiration, the speed will decrease. decrease. Why? Because while you do expiration, what happened to the airways? Now they become smaller. Yeah. Become smaller. Which airways become smaller? The large or the small airways? The small ones. Small ones. So when you take out the first part of the air, you have the speed high, right? Very high. Then, when you take out 25% of the air, the speed is still high. high. Yeah. But when you take out half of the air, you will see that the speed becomes lower. You understand? And when you yeah. take out 75% of the air, what is the speed? Low. Low, you understand? So these are the flows. We have to study the flows, the speeds. The first and most important one, and not the most, the first one is called PEF. What is the speed? It's peak, expiratory, what? Flow. It's in the beginning or in the end of expiration? Beginning. Beginning. Okay, what is the next speed we care about? The speed when we took out how much air? 25 percent. 25 percent. We call it fair. 25. So first expiratory flow when we took out 25 percent of the vital capacity. Is it clear? The speed is still high. High. When we take out 50%, we call it fair, 50, and fair, 75. Here, the speed is low. So these two are looking, are studying what airways? The airways that got narrow during the expiration. So FEF 50 and FEF 75 are studying what airways? Small or big? 
small because the speed became lower because the small airways become smaller. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? So FAF 50, FAF 75 studying the small airways. FAF 25 and FAF studying the large airway. Which of them do you think it depends on the effort, on the physical effort? The first two or the second two? The first two. The first two. The path depends on the effort. So that's why I have to push the patient. Breathe out with all your forest. Do it, do it, do it. More, 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 more. But the most important thing also to breathe out with all his forest. Because if, if, she, if she do like this or he, look. Will I have a peak? No, I will not have a peak. I have to tell you, again, do it again. Breathe out with all your forehead. And she has to do it. I have to see a peak. You understand? Yes? Yes. So this is. This is the spirometry. This is the normal spirometry. Clear? Now we move on. Now let's do a pathology. What pathology do you see here? Obstruction or restriction? Obstruction. Obstruction of the airway, not a restriction of the alveoli. Is it clear? Okay, let's see what we can have on under obstruction. Let's think of a patient that has a mild obstruction, not so strong obstruction, okay? And I tell him, breathe in all the air. Get everything out. And I force him to get everything out. Can he do that? He has, no. a, he has a small obstruction. So you can get something out through something a little narrower, or you can with a difficult. You can. Okay, so the vital capacity, FVT, in this case, how much it will be from the pipe letter? Pipe letter. If we can breathe everything in and then breathe everything out, the vital capacity will be normal. You understand, guys? Okay. But what about the air that goes out in the first second? Through a narrower space. What do you think? Will it? Will it go four letters in the first second? No, less. No, let's give an example. For example, what? Three. Three letters. So the tip no. Can you calculate the tip no? Three on five, not four on five. So not 80%. It's exactly what? 60%. Right? So it's normal, if no? No, it's low. It's low. The FEV1 is? Low. low. The vital capacity is? No. no. Let's see how the loop is drawn. You understand what I mean? Yes. OK, here we have the volume. Here we have the flows, right? Here we have expiration, here we have inspiration. What is the maximum vo volume that we can breathe it? 
enforced vital capacity. Yes. And the flows that I care about are expiratory or inspiratory flow speed? Expiratory. Okay, what are the flows that we care about? First one. Peak. Peak. Fat 25. Fat 50. Fat 75. I forgot to tell you something very important. The fat 25 is what? Is the post expiratory flow. When you have, when I got out how many? How much? 25% of the vital capacity, right? You can see it map 75. What is the meaning of map 75? It's the same as fat 25. But how I read it? I read it. Maximum expiratory flow when I still have to get out. 75% of the vital capacity. So MAP 75 study, small or large airway? It's the same as FIP 25. Small. Small. Large. Right. The FAP and FAP 25 study, large airway. FAP 50 and FAP 75 study small airway. So MEF 75 study what? It's a large. Large because MEF 75 is FEF 25. And FEF 75 is called also MEF 25. So maximum expiratory flow when I still have to get out 25%. You understand? Synonym. It's the same, FEF25 or MEF75. Clear? Okay, I don't care. Next, now, how we will draw this, the loop? Do you think this guy will reach the vital capacity on the loop? Yes, because the vital capacity yes. is normal, right? Inspiratory inspiration. Do we have a problem in, uh, in inspiration in the obstruction? Do we face a problem doing inspiration or not? Mm. No, because in inspiration, the PIP is low. low and I open the airway, right? So the loop of inspiration is the same. Now, what happened during expiration? What happened with the speeds of expiration? They are? Low. Lower. Which is the most affected one? Where, what and what? The peak. No. Because the peak depends on the effort. Which one is the most affected one? 25 and 50. 50 and? 75. 75. So I may have something like this. It will not, maybe it will reach, maybe it will not reach the, the, but the most affected one are those two. The speeds of FAF 50 and FAF. 75. Why? Because we said in obstruction, the most affected ones are the small airways. So you see something like this. If you see something like this, you suspect what pathology? Obstruction or restriction? Obstruction. Obstruction. Okay, what are the two patholo main pathologies of obstruction? Chronic bronchitis that is go to COPD and asthma. What is the difference between them? You have to know that in both of them, you have inflammation, you understand? But the difference between them, asthma is hypersensibility. So it means the bronchi can be like this and this and this and this, and it has times and times. For example, if you, I don't know, meet an allergen, something you are allergic to it, you understand? You are sensible to it. What will happen? The bronchi will close and uh, he or she cannot breathe properly. It will 
cough a lot. This is what asthma, and it 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 modifies. For example, some people have the hypersensibility. I don't know when they see when they breathe flowers, or uh, I don't know in uh, spring and you know in cold. But what about the chronic bronchitis? Chronic bronchitis is characterized by obstruction that is irreversible or minimum reversible. You understand what I mean? So this is done by smoking. Smoking and smoking and smoking and smoking and smoking, years and years of smoking do a chronic obstruction, chronic inflammation that closes little by little the airway. You understand? Okay, what if a patient comes to you, he's a smoker for 20 years or 15 years, a, pa a package per day, so one, 20 cigarettes per day, a package per day for 15 years. So we calculate it, 1x15, and we say 15 package year. If he said, I smoke two packages for 15 years, I say, 2x15 is 30. So I say 30 package year. This is how I calculate package year. I don't care. He says he smoked one package per year, per day for 15 years. Okay, I say okay. And he says I I can breathe perfectly, but he is somehow he can't explain to me when he can breathe perfectly. You understand? So I don't know exactly if he has chronic bronchitis or he has also some asthma with the chronic bronchitis. You understand what I mean? He has also some hypersensibility. How, how can I know if he has asthma or chronic bronchitis? I made him a test and I saw this obstruction. How can I know that he has asthma or chronic bronchitis? I have to give him something. Something that will do bronco Dilation. Dilation. So I give him beta-2 agonist, salbutamol, or ventolin. I think many of you heard of it. It's something that you, you saw it in movies too. So ventolin is a beta-2 agonist, will go to the bronchi and dilate them. I wait 10 minutes and repeat the test. If the PEV1 increase by 20% or 200 milliliter, I know that this person has what? If I repeat the test and the PEV1 is increased, what he has? Asthma or chronic bronchitis? Asthma. Asthma. That means that the airway got bigger. It responded to bronchi dilation. You understand? Fine. Now, this is it, the example. Which of those, I forgot to ask you, which of those can give me a diagnosis of obstruction? So I will say, he has obstruction. No comment. Which do you think? FTC, FTV1, Tifno index. Tifno? Tifno index, yes. When you see the Tifno index low, under 70, you say diagnosis of obstruction. Is it clear? All right. Yes. yes. So the FEV1, will, after you, you, you put the diagnosis, you look at the FEV1 to see how narrow is the obstruction. So FEV1 will determine if you have a mild, medium, or severe obstruction. Okay, next. Let's say this one. This one has a smaller alveoli. You understand? The alveoli cannot expand. This is restriction or obstruction? Restriction. Restriction. Can you give me a pathology that cannot let the alveoli to expand? 
by browsers? By browsers. Of course, obesity. A lot of obesity will not let the lung to expand correctly. Cancer, do you understand? Someone with pneumoctemia that you took out his lung, one of the lungs, so the lung will be smaller than both of you, understand? So anything that makes the lung smaller or cannot expand is restriction. Is it clear? No. No. So this one, I tell him to breathe in and out. What do you think? Can he breathe? Uh, five letters in and out? No. no. No, because he has smaller lung, right? So the FBC is, give me an example, half, half. okay? For example, 2.5, okay? Letter. I'll give you an example. So it's low or normal? Low. Low. Okay, next, FEV1. The normal is four letters. Can he get out four letters in the first no. second? No, because all the air that he got out are? Two point five. So he cannot get out four. So for example, he will get out two letters. So it's low or normal? Also low. Also low. Okay, next one, Tifno. Tifno, how is Tifno here? Normal. Normal. It's 80%. So Tifno is normal. So I have no what? Obstruction. Because I took out 80% of the air in the first second. I don't have a, something that narrows the airway. But the FEV1 is low. Why the FEV1 is low? Because all the total air is low. No. That's why. That's why I don't look at the FEV1 to say if I have obstruction or restriction. You understand? Because both of them can influence it. You understand? To say I have obstruction, I look at what? If no. And I see it low. Okay, next. What if someone had the FBC, for example, four point, I don't know, six. It's slow, right? The FEV1 is four. How is the FEV1 in this condition? Good. <laughs> Normal. If no, 90%. So no, Tifno is? Hi. Hi. So the Tifno can be in restriction, can be normal or? Hi. Hi. What is the meaning of high Tifno? It means that the lung is, had a, a lot of recoil that it will uh, collapse like this to get all the out in the first second. Second, so it means it's rigidity. Fibrosis, most probably, if Tifno is high. You understand? But in all the restrictions, what do you see for sure that is low in all the types of restrictions? Which one is always low? FBC. FBC. So when you see FBC low, you think of? Restriction. If you see Tifno low, you think of? Obstruction. That's it. Is it clear? Yes. How, how is the loop? Does it reach the FVC here? No, it's half. No. But its shape will be modified? No. No. It will have a normal shape. It will have a peak and the speeds decrease little by little normally. Yes, it will have a peak and the speed will decrease little by little without this, like this. You understand? Without a, a significant decrease in 550 and 525, you understand? 
550 and 575. Clear? So it looks normal, but narrow. So it's modified on the flow part or on the volume part in restriction? Slow. Volume part, is it clear? Okay, but I cannot say for sure that I have restriction only on spirometry. I say probability of restriction. Why? Because I am not testing something very important. When I say restriction, means the lung is very small, right? But to calculate the lung, I have to calculate what? The total lung capacity. But I cannot calculate the total lung capacity through, through what? Spirometry. Why? Because I cannot calculate what? RV. The RV. So I have to do another test to confirm the restriction. You understand? And what is the other test? It's called platysmography. What this test see? The residual volume and the total lung capacity. How can the total lung capacity be in restriction? Low. If you see total lung capacity low, residual volume low, this is restriction. You understand? Yes. Of course, you can check also the DLCO, the diffusion of the gases will also be low. low. Those are signs of the restriction. Okay? To put the diagnosis, you need to do the data management. Okay, what if a patient, look, what, uh, what this patient has? He has oh. obstruction and? Restriction. Restriction. Fine. Okay, what does this patient have? Obstruction. Obstruction and? Emphysema. So this is COPD. A severe COPD, right? But this is obstruction, not end restriction. Is it clear? Okay, let's talk about this first. Mixed. Mixed pathology. But obstruction and restriction. His lung is small and he has narrow airways. Okay, what, how we will see the FBC in this patient? Low. Low. How we will see the FEV1? Low. Low. How we will see the TIPNO? Also low. Low. Now, when you see all low, 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 you are sure that this one has what? The mixed disease. Like no, you are not sure if he has mixed disease. Obstruction. You are sure only that he has what? Obstruction. You have to do another test to be sure that he has what? This will give you obstruction for sure. Okay? But here only a probability of what? Restriction. restriction. So what I will have to do to be sure that he has also restriction? To check for what? Total lung capacity and residual, residual volume. volume and find them low. You understand? So I have to do platysmography. Clear? Mm -hmm. yes. If I have all of this, I say for sure he has what? Mixed. Now, let's see this guy. This guy. The problem with the emphysema, do you know what is the problem with the emphysema? Is that the lung gets bigger, but it cannot Compress. Get compressed. So I will breathe air in, but I cannot breathe it out. Breathe it out. So what will happen? The residual volume will increase. Yes, the residual volume in this patient with emphysema will increase. increase. So what will happen to the vital capacity? Hmm? Becomes smaller. Yes. 
So this patient will have the fetal capacity small, but not because the lung is small, small but because the residual volume is Hi. big. The air come in and cannot go out. So how you will see the FVC here? Small. Small. How you will see the FEV1 here? In COPD, he has obstruction. No. Small. How you will see Tifno? Higher. How higher? He has a severe obstruction. Sorry, lower. No. So he cannot breathe 70% in the first second. He will breathe 30% in the first. You understand? Second. So the FEV1 will be very low, and this will be low. Okay, this looks like what? Low, low, low. Mixed, right? But this guy has mixed? No. No, he no. has what? He has obstruction only. So I'm sure that he has obstruction. How I check if he has mixed? If he has restriction? What will I do? Platysmography and check what? Total lung capacity and residual volume. How I, I will see them now? No. Hmm? Residual volume will be big. Here, the residual volume is big. high. The total lung capacity is normal or high. high. If it's low, it's restriction. Now, you look at it. The lung is big, it's not small. You understand? So, someone with obstruction, the air can come in, but sometimes the air cannot go out. When this happens, the fetal capacity will decrease not because the lung is small, but because the residual volume is higher. Higher. So in the exam, they may ask you, which of the pathology increase residual volume? What do you search for? Obstruction or restriction? Obstruction. Obstruction. If they ask you, which of the pathology decrease the vital capacity? And you have obstruction, restriction, or obstruction and restriction. What do you say? Which of the following decrease the vital capacity? Obstruction, restriction, or obstruction and restriction? Both. Both. No. Both. 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 Usually restriction, but if the residual volume increase, the vital capacity will decrease. decrease. You understand now? Okay, which of the following decrease the total lung capacity? Obstruction, restriction, or both? Restriction only. Only restriction. Is it clear now? Yes. So this is the answer to the question that you, you may see in the exam. Which of the problems increase, decrease, what happens during, okay? Now, if I look at this one, or this one, how is the loop on these two guys with COPD, severe COPD, or mixed? How is the loop? Can it reach the FVC? No. No. Does it have uniformly, Volumes? No. 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 So it will be here like this. In inspiration, no problem. But the this is mixed or oh, severe COPD. You understand? If you see something like this, you, you think of a mixed or a severe COPD. Okay, now let's make examples of some of my patients because I do this spirometry to, I used to do to everyone in my hospital. They call me, come do a spirometry to this patient, we do it, okay? So let's check some of my 
Let's make an example of a spirometry. If you look, after I did the spirometry, uh, we, we can, you can check here what you will see. The paper will give you what? The age of, I completed the age of the patient, uh, height, weight, okay, male. And of course, if he smoke or not, you have to write. For example, if he smoke 10 cigarettes per day for 30 years, what does this mean? Half a package a day for 30 years, so one 0.5 x 30. It will give you a 15 package year, okay? It's the same as one package per day for 15 years. Okay, but he is non smoker since 1991. Why did he, uh, why did they ask me to do this spirometry? He knows, he is known with what, with COPD, but they want to check if he has also what? Asthma. Asthma. Okay, I don't care. I made the spirometry and uh, let's look at this. What is this? This is how many seconds I forced him to do expiration. How many seconds I forced him to do expiration? 7.5 seconds. Seven seconds. Is it okay? Is it good? Good enough? Yes. But you have to keep that anyone with obstruction has a longer duration of expiration. So I must try to not stop at six seconds and try to force him to seven to eight, you understand? Okay, let's see the loop. What do you see in the loop? Did, does it reach the vital capacity? No. No. Does it look normal in the flow of expiration? No. No, it has decreased flows, right? It has that concavity here. With very decreased the, F, the 50 and 75, right? So what do you think of this? What do you will think of this? Obstruction, reception, or mixed? Mixed. Mixed. Volume modification and flow, expiratory flow modification. I think that is mixed. Now I have to check the... this LC. the day first we look at fvc you see what do you, do you check on fvc what you will have here if you look here you will see fred what is the meaning of fred the normal value so uh, the device calculates this one with this age with this height with this way must have this fvc okay you understand <laughs> yes. Okay, what is this trial one, trial two, trial three? This is how many times I did the spirometry with him because I needed two times that are close to each other. You understand? Okay, how much he, he exhaled? Best one? 2.1, okay. 2.1 is low, normal, or uh, is low or normal? Low. 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 Okay, but how how low? Is it really low? A lot of decrease. Uh, how much percent is it decrease <coughs> from the 3.61? Do you know? If you look here, it will give you the value. So almost 42% is decreased. You understand? So you have only 58% of the FVC of a normal one. So wh where, where, where is easiest to look at the best and compare it to the PRED? Or you look only at the PRED percentage? What is easier? At the percentage? Yes. If I see it 58, it is, I say it is. Low. Low. So I will, I will write FVC equal low. Next. What should I look at? FEV1. 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 Normal value is 
2.56. Best is 0 0.99. It is low, but how much low? What? Let's see. Is it, it is very low, you, under, you see? You only break one letter out of 2.5 in the first so, seconds. So this is very low. FEV1 will be what, very low. Now Tifno, where is Tifno here? Tifno, you see Tifno? FEV1 on? FVC. FVC. I don't care about normal values. Why? Because I have to know if no is between what and what? 70 and 80. Exactly. You don't look at anything on Tifno. You have to know it in mind. You only look where? In best. So this value is the value of Tifno. How much is the Tifno? 46%. You understand? I don't look here at the percentage because this percentage will tell me this in relationship with this, and I don't care on Tifno. Tifno is already on percentage. So how much is Tifno here? 46. 47. So I write here Tifno. What is Tifno here? 47. Low, Low right? So I have what? Obstruction for sure, right? And it may be have what? Restriction. So it may be mixed. Can I confirm? No, because I don't have the total line capacity and the residual volume here. Is it clear? Yes. But if in the exam they ask you, it can be severe obstruction, COPD with emphysema. Yes, it can be mixed. Yes, you understand? Okay, now, what do you see here? Pre, post. What did I do? I did the test. Hmm? Ventolin. Or? Yeah, I gave him Ventolin and waited for 10 minutes and repeated the spirometry with the poor old guy, 78 years. <laughs> okay, and we did it two times to check what? To check if the FEV1 will increase by 20% or 20, 200 milliliter. You understand? To say, oh my, okay, he has also what? Asthma. Asthma. Okay, let's check. FEV1, how much is its best? 0 0.97. Okay, before the Ventolin, how much he get out? 0 0.99. Did it increase by 20%? No. No, it was, it actually he got tired and he couldn't also, you understand what I mean? So he has what? What, what kind of obstruction he has? Reversible or irreversible? Irreversible. Irreversible. Bronchitis, chronic bronchitis, smoking, COPD. Is it clear? So this yes. is a, uh, uh, this is how you read it. Okay, the next example. Look at this. 57 female, 57 years old, former smoker. She smoked six cigarettes per day for 20 years. Six cigarettes per day means uh, 20 is a pack. So quarter pack for 20 years, almost five, six packs a year. Not a heavy smoker, right? Okay, let's see the curve. What do you see here? She has a modification on volume? Yes. Yes. Also the flow. Yeah, but look, the concavity here isn't that modified. You see, it's almost normal. It's not like that one. 
that one was more obvious, this. Do you understand? This one. If it was like this, you understand? Yes. It was more obvious if it has, it has concavity like this. The first will be, okay, I don't care. It may have mixed. It may have what? Mix. Mix, let's check. What do you see? FVC. How much is the FVC? Fast. Vital capacity. How much is the vital capacity? Low, normal, or? Where do I look? Where I look at the vital capacity? Fast. Where I look? Predicted. Best, trial one, trial two, trial three, or pred percentage? Best. And the percentage. Pred percentage. This. So this is where I look. It's normal? No, it's low. Okay, next. FDB1, where I look? Also great percentage. Yeah, so FDB1 is also? Low. Low. Now Tifno, where I look? Best. At best. How is the Tifno? Normal. Normal. So what this patient has? Only what? Rest? Restriction. Restriction. I'm not sure about obstruction because he has a normal tipno. 70% of the air got out. You understand? But if you look at the FEP 25, FEP 75, it will be low. So he, she may have an obstruction of the small uh, small uh, airway. airways. You understand? So this is probably what? Uh? Restriction. Restriction. We need to do further examination because I don't know how to confirm the restriction only on spirometry. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, and that was it. See you next time.